we are going to be talking about how you can put tests and quizzes into Brightspace. And this is really an introduction because uh, it's only 30 minutes. And so we'll see what we can cover in those 30 minutes. So hopefully everybody knows that when you're in um, Brightspace in your course on the activities menu, you would go to the quizzes link uh, in the activities menu. And I am going to go there now. All right, so let me get into my course. All right, so here, if I go to activities and quizzes, um, in this quizzes tool, well, before I do that, throughout Brightspace, you'll notice that when you get into um, various, when you go into various areas in Brightspace, there are tabs. So when I get into the quizzes tool, here I'm on the manage quizzes tabs, but there are also other tabs here like the question library, which would be for uh, question pools would be there. Um, if I've given some quizzes, I can go here to get stats about it. And then if I want to lock down the testing environment, I can go here to lock down browser. Your first time in the quizzes tool though, uh, if you want to build a new quiz, of course, you would be clicking on this new quiz button, and I will do that here. Um, and just like I said, in other areas of Brightspace, when you are setting up something or looking at a tool, just make sure you check all of your tabs going all the way across. And so the first one here is the properties tab. So basically, what I need to do is tell the system or indicate the name of my quiz or exam. So I'm gonna call this one quiz one. Categories here or for categories, if I wanted to categorize my, categorize rather my, the quizzes in the quizzes area. So this category only affects how things are categorized in the quizzes area. Notice here it says this quiz is empty. I can add and edit questions. I'll do this in a moment. But also here on this properties tab is um, a, the description. Uh, moving right along though, if you do happen to use this description or introduction area, just make sure that you click the on button uh, here. You can also add a page, put some information in there. Just make sure you click the on radio button for those as well. Um, you also have some optional properties related to a quiz. So do I wanna allow hints? So if I've built some hints into the uh, questions, do I wanna disable right click? In other words, when students open to be able to click the right uh, uh, mouse button. And, um, and then also, do you want the students to be able to access email, instant messaging, or see their other alerts if they're in process with the quiz? So those are the other options on this properties tab. So if I want to add questions to this quiz, I need to click this add edit questions button and I'll go ahead and click this. And so um, this is the new quiz builder experience. And so if you don't see this option, um, you should see it the first time you get in. But if you don't, there's a little carrot here. If you click on that, it'll, um, you, you'd be able to turn the quiz building experience on. And so this would be the easiest way to add some questions. And of course, we're gonna be adding them one at a time through this view. So if I click on add, then I can say I wanna add a new question. I have some other options here. I can add a section or I can add a question pool. I'm gonna start with adding a new question. So I click here and it's, uh, when you want to add a question or a uh, Put a question inside of your quiz, you have to tell the system what type of question it is. And so there are various question types. So if the question is true, false, multiple choice, multi-select. So notice there's one written response or short answer. So this is more like a longer essay and this is just like a short, quick answer. And so there are a number of uh, question types. So you would have to decide what question type you're gonna use. I'm going to say that um, maybe I'll choose a multiple choice type question. So in here, I would actually enter the text for the question in this question text 
plots. And so I can say, All right, and so I can also, I need to provide some answer choices because this is a multiple choice. So I will say it's in Baton Rouge, or maybe it's in New Orleans, or maybe it's in Slidell, or maybe it's in Gretna. And then I would indicate which uh, is the correct answer here. Now you notice as I am building this question over on the right hand side of the screen, I get a, a preview of what that question actually looks like. I can ran, I can add more answer choices if I need them. I can randomize the answers for each student. So in other words, when student A gets the question, maybe the answers are presented in this um, in this order, and when student B gets it, it would randomize it so these answer choices are not uh, in that same order, they're in a different order. I'm gonna just uh, leave that unchecked, and then I can indicate how many points this question is worth. So if it were worth five points, for example, um, and then, he or save and copy. So if the next question is very similar to this one, I can do save and copy and just edit the next question or I can click the save and new. Before we move on, one thing I wanted to mention, you might notice when I'm entering the question here in this question text box, I do get some formatting options here that I can do. Um, so uh, let's say this was a question and there was an image that I needed to have associated with this question. I can click on this uh, icon here to add an image and I can upload the image from wherever I have it so that it appears in here with the question. So I can do formatting. There's also some um, various equations. I've actually personally not used any of these, but you can play around with these to see if they meet your needs. So I'm gonna do save and let's create a new, if I say save and new, that means um, I'm creating a new multiple choice question. If I wanted to uh, create another question type, then I would just click save and then choose the question type. So I'll say save and new. And um, I don't know. Uh, Janice, we have a um, chat question, not really a question. It said, could you do a short answer example? Okay, thank you, I will. All right, and so this is obviously the correct answer. I might not have spelled it correctly, but forgive me, I'm moving. So if I needed to rearrange these, I could actually uh, drag and drop into a new position, and then I'll just say save. All right, and so, and I neglected to change this to five points, but it's one point. So here I would just go to the add button and then I can say new question. And if it's short answer, I would just choose short answer. And then this is the format um, for it. Uh, so the, and then whatever the answer, All right, and then I'll do save. And so now I have three questions in my, um, 
in this particular quiz. And for the sake of time, I am just going to go back to my settings for quiz one. So what I see now in this quiz questions area is the three questions that I uh, entered into my quiz. Uh, notice this one here says one point. So I can actually edit the values over here. So this one should be worth five points. And then I can just save and close. Oh, shouldn't have saved and closed. I could just save. All right, so now I have these three questions in here on the properties tab. Now notice also here it's saying, how many questions per page do I want the students to see when they're taking the, the quiz? So if you look at these quiz questions as they appear right here, they're all going to be on the same page. So if I say I want one question per page and I click apply, notice now I have a little purple line. So this is sort of my visual indicator that these questions will actually appear on um, different pages. I can choose this option that I want to prevent moving backwards to the pages. So when they're on page one, they have to answer that question and they can't go back. And then if I want to shuffle the questions, I can choose that as well. So if I want the students to get these same questions, but I want them to get them in a different order, then I can choose the shuffling. So notice, uh, pay particular attention to this area right here. If I click this shuffle and I say save, I get a little indicator that these questions are being shuffled at this area. Janice, we okay. have another question in chat. It yes. says, so for short answer, the student will need to enter the exact answer you put in in order to receive credit. Okay, I'm sorry. With short answers, with certain question types, the system is not going to um, be able to answer those automatically. So unlike a true false multiple choice or multi-select, um, where there is no, um, with those, there would be a particular answer that is correct or answers that would be correct or not. With short answer or written response, the system is actually not going to grade those. So you would actually have to go in to each student's quiz and grade those particular types of questions. So that answer blank there uh, for what the correct answer for that question is, is more for you when you're going in to grade the particular um, students' exams. Hopefully that answers the question. If not, let me know and I'll try again. All right, so we, um, we have other tabs. And so I'm gonna move on to the restrictions tab. So if I click on this restrictions tab, uh, when you are creating a quiz, the very first, um, when you first create it, it's automatically gonna be hidden from users. So you will have to decide when you want to unhide this, when you want them to see it. There are um, date, there's a due date and then the availability date. So you would be entering these date restrictions. So whenever the quiz would, is due, you would check to enter that due date, you would check this box and then indicate. So if this was due say on Friday the 27th at 5 p.m., then I would enter that this quiz is gonna be due on that date. You and then when you want to restrict the time frame that the student has to take the uh, quiz or the exam, then you would put it here in the availability. So even though this is due on the 27th, maybe I want them to be able to start this on the 26th at 5 p.m. And then um, they have until the 27th at 5 p.m. So in other words, this quiz link will be available to the students during this time frame. I can even extend this so if they would be able to um, take the quiz uh, late, then I could say um, it's on the 27th. I mean, on the, well, let's see. If I give them a couple of hours or an extra hour to be able to take the quiz, it's actually due on the 27th at five. 
they can take it for another hour, but it's going to be more late. So maybe I would take off some points or something if they're uh, if it's late. But anyway, you need to or you should enter whatever is going to be the due date, and then if there is a restriction on when of the time frame that they need to take the quiz, then you would enter that as the has a start date and has an end date. Um, hey Janice? Yes. You have a chat question that says, can we take the test to review what they see? Yes. And we, I'll actually do a preview here so you can see how to preview a quiz. Um, all right. And so release conditions, I'm not going to get into that, but you can actually release quizzes based on things that the students do. If they, uh, for example, um, you can't take quiz one without having, I mean, can't take quiz two without having taken quiz one. You can set those types of things up. Um, and then uh, timing here is where you would get into how long they have to take the quiz. So for this three question quiz, I'll say that maybe they have 15 minutes, even though they should be able to do this in a very short period of time. And then this grace period has to do with um, how much time the students get to uh, would be given to be able to complete the quiz. So when you're actually working online trying to take an exam, there's going to be some lag time with the internet. And so the student, if I left these options here, time limit 15 minutes and grace period five, that means they actually get 15 minutes to take the test, but then there's a five minute period, grace period that they would get so that they could um, be successful at submitting the quiz. I wouldn't be too concerned about the grace period here. This is not that they get now 20 minutes to take the test. This is really just giving them some time to be able to get, um, submit the quiz successfully while using uh, the, their computer. You have a chat question. Yes. If you are administering a quiz in class and plan to start it when you are ready, maybe not an exact time planned ahead, is there a way to set up the quiz and just release it when you are ready? That's still going to be restricted by the um, time. So what I would do is if I were in class and I wanted the students, I wasn't sure when um, I was gonna release it, I would just use the hide from users and then go into the properties and unhide it. That would probably be the easier thing to do. <clears throat> All right, and so on timing, what do you want to happen after the grace period? I want to, in my example here, I want to prevent students from making further changes so they can't do anything, but notice there's a couple of other options, so you would choose that. The special access has to do with uh, students with, um, that might have a disability exception. So let's say I had a student with a disability exception, and so I'm giving 15 minutes to everyone in the class, but this student is supposed to get uh, time and a half, then I would go to special access here, add users to special access, and then indicate how much more time this particular student would have to take the test. When you're moving between the tabs, then I would suggest just clicking the gray save button to save your options there, and then I can move to the next tab. This one is for um, assessment, so automatically graded. Well, that sounds like a good idea, so I will check that box. Also in Brightspace, if there's ever um, something you, you need more information about, if there's a question mark here, then that means that you can get additional help on that. When you um, set up your grade book, which we would recommend that you do um, first, <laughs> you would indicate which item in the grade book is associated with this particular quiz. Since I haven't set up the grade book for that, I'm gonna go on past this. And then what? once I indicate which grade item it is, do I want this grade to automatically be exported to the uh, grade book? And yes, I would. So I would check that box as well. Uh, and then how many attempts do the student does, will the student have to take this? And um, And then, you know, if it's, let's say they had two tries at this, which, attempt what I want or what do I want to do with those uh, various attempts. So I am going to click on save. 
objectives. We don't have that piece in Brightspace yet. Um, but submission views, this is this tab here is important um, based on what you want to happen once the student clicks the submit button that they are finished the quiz. So if you had a long testing period, now if it's just over a class period, you know, the uh, out of 50 minutes or the uh, the 75 minutes, that's fine. The default view may work for you. The default view means that when the, the student clicks submit, then they will see what they receive. So if um, my example quiz is here is worth 15 points and the student got 10 out of 15, then that's what they would see. Um, when you want them to see something else, like after the testing period is over and you want them to be able to go back and review, say, questions they got wrong, then this is when you would add an additional view, an additional submission view and indicate when the students can see it and actually what you want them to see. All right, and then there's also a reporting. I'm gonna click on save and close and answer the question about how you can uh, preview the test. Now, I still have this as hidden, so the students actually would not be able to see this, even though this due date and this availability date would come and go, and as long as this is hidden, they're not gonna be able to see it. So um, I can actually, from here, make this visible to users. And I could have also unchecked the hidden box on that restrictions tab. But if you want to preview a, a quiz and see how the students will actually see it, click on the arrow and then I can choose preview. All right. And so then you see this initial information and then I can start the quiz. And remember I said I wanted to see one question per page, right? And I wanted to see it, uh, the questions shuffled. I believe I chose that. And then I can go, but I couldn't backtrack. So there's only a next page. See, it says I, if I move to the next page, I'll not be able to come back. Um, And then here is the short answer. And notice here, the student doesn't see what I said would be the answer. And then, and then I would submit the quiz. But as the, um, as the instructor, of course, I'm seeing this a little bit differently than the students would, but notice I got 10 out of 15 right now because the uh, short answer question actually has to be uh, answered or scored by the professor. So I will click on done. All right, and then I can get out of this preview. Um, okay, and so that was sort of quick and fast. I want to, it's 1227, I can hang around for a few minutes after this, but I do want to point out where we have some information. If you are not following us on cat food, then I would suggest that you do. We're cat.zula.edu slash food. You can actually subscribe to this blog where you would get uh, an email when, uh, when new content is added. But here on the right-hand side of the page, there is a Brightspace documents. But notice there's a guide to taking tests in Brightspace. So if you were giving this, asking the students to take uh, tests uh, through Brightspace, I would suggest providing a link to this so that the students would have this information and this can head off some of the problems that they might have with taking um, a test. 